Welcome back, guys. We're taking a look at the highlights from round number one, Miramar TPP here on day three. And uh, some of them were pretty insane. If you missed it, I'm not going to spoil it, but we had probably the highlight of the entire uh, PWM season one happen. That will come a little bit later. Two main topics we were covering uh, for that first game was about one of them being Cloud9. Uh, can they perform back from their the woeful performances they had uh, in the week one and coming to the week two? Can they get it done? And uh, the first part of the answer was no. Obviously, we thought that you know they could have done better, but losing two members early did not help their cause. But they come out in the end to get very close to Chicken Air, as we'll see probably later in this highlight. Yeah, lots of fighting up here on the hill. So, uh, Detonator and Max still VIP going head to head. Detonator had a fantastic flank coming up behind Max still VIP. Nightwolf having a, a pretty rough match here, I'd have to say. They just got kind of surrounded by a couple of teams and not the best positioning up on the hill. Genji Gold, after coming off a bad performance uh, from the last week's PSS Finals, they're doing well again this time around. This round one, that. Eska really showing the heaps there. Just talking about the shots coming through. Just the dude tap on the head the second he sees it. That's that, uh, yeah. WGS Arena just coming behind a Freak of Freaks Fatal. And a nice job done there as well. And Cloud9, they just got really lucky circles. They had the two compounds within the circles, and they stayed alive. And this is the play. The grenade hits two, shoots down Kukadas, turns back, kills Sinone, finishes him off. There's one other member, Lambutan, and he wins the firefight against him as well after killing three other members, Joel. That will go down in history. A PW, if at all anything, and Amazing things that have happened in this tournament in the past, but that one's gonna go right up there at the top. A way to go out. Yeah. I can kill everyone, but no one can kill me. That yeah, was I the... mean, props to him. I think he should have just kept first aiding, but either way, this was the 2v2. Catch, catches Uri behind the tree, gets shot down, and, uh, or rather sucked it, and then Catch finishes him off. So look at that, Cloud9 actually on top, something we haven't seen in a while, Joel. You talk about Cloud9 getting the circles to their favor, but we always put the predicament that you have to know how to use the circles that are given to you. If you have the win conditions now presented in your favor, some teams can take advantage, but some teams have a hard time even manipulating that to their benefit. But Cloud9 did it this time around. They defended a circle with two members, which became a difficulty when you're talking about so many teams, like magnetically, just being attracted to exactly where you were. So Cloud9 had a tough assignment for them, but did a good job with catch in yeah. one house and suck on the other house, shooting to the defensive forces. And they did what did really mattered and really what it took to get that first place in that first round. Yeah, they truly did. It's a uh, bit of an eye-opener for me because after the first day, I was like, you know, it's the Cloud9 organization. They're supposed to be doing a little bit better. And then finally today, I'm like, oh, okay, I see why these guys are in Cloud9 and certainly proved a lot of the haters wrong after the first map. But again, it's about consistency. They have to come in here on FPP and do just as well. It really needs that performance, really. Just talking about all these fans turning out for Clown9, talking about Dingception, Suck, Yurika, and Catch, and these guys are hugely popular here in Korea, in addition to uh, Genji Gold and also the other teams that really pick up the names when you talk about uh, the popularity on the line here. And it just really goes to show you that Clown9, after a bad performance from last week, really needed a game like this where you know, this round could set them off for a really good day too. And here they are once again, looking like they can push that forward as long as they fall into a little bit more comfortable in terms of complacency. Yeah, um, I have some stats here and I was looking at them and I was wondering, hey, is Cloud9 better on TPP on Miramar? Okay. Unfortunately, after day one, the only stats we had were- They were bad, bad every, stats. every game. So. <laughs> There was no real distinction between whether they were good at one or the other, but uh, we did have some other stats, right? Acto Stars Red is really good on TPP. They have a lot more trouble on FPP, actually. They were placed 18th in all the FPP rounds, but in first for all the TPP rounds. So this time around, they'll be having a little bit more trouble. And that's kind of the, just a pred prediction we talk about. But what I realized from last Saturday, talking about that two days ago, PSS Finals, where the game ended up, I put a lot of names up on the board, right? I talked about Genji Black, Genji Gold, obviously having a good day. BSG Luna coming off a really good week, looking like they can just continue that on. 
And I was just absolutely wrong. Everything I talked about, the prediction, and talking about mm. the stats and what that really means for the day ahead, really doesn't mean anything. It's just really talking about the games ahead in the second round will be just an independent one at them. We're gonna see all the teams in contention. Yeah, so Joe, we are gonna jump into FPP on Miramar for round two. Well, here we do go, that flight path. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder for the teams who want to go towards the bottom left and the top right. So WGS might be having another tough start to this one. Still a fair, uh, fair enough fly path for uh, most of the teams to get to where they are. Obviously, if you're shooting for Campo Militar or even Prison and Los Egos, you're kind of expecting that you're going to have a hard time to get there. You know, regardless of the fly path, you just have to get really lucky sometimes uh, to get a fly landing right on your city. But for the most uh, teams that are investing in the central part of Miramar, uh, just dealing with a lot of risk, uh, trying to get to the next location, but uh, talking about, you know, usually a good landing path in terms of the pathing uh, will allow these teams to find their location relatively uh, simpler this time around. Taking a look at uh, the finish here and see who wants to go into El Pozo, another relatively big city that certainly can fit three teams if they want to get a little bit riskier with it. We'll see if anyone joins Max still VIP. For now, it doesn't look like it. El Pozo becomes increasingly tough for um, you know, even two teams to really call the truth. Say, we're going to farm this part of the map and you get to farm the other yeah. part of the, the city. And it just never really works that way. El Pozo just kind of too closer together with all those uh, housing complexes. It just means that you're going to have to just make sure not gonna be like Los Leones where you can just split you know, one side of that city and just be all right, just farming that out. And these other teams uh, landing, not really in the city themselves, but trying to go for a vehicle to get to their next location, seeing what they do. WNV, one of the first teams to pick up a circle here. Looks like they want to head north up towards Campo Militar. I'm trying, Joel. Um, the circle here is all the way on the east side as well, so very different from uh, <laughs> the second time that says, let's just save suck. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, they can't be serious, because talking about, you know, suck being the top fragger for this team, it's an understa uh, you know, understandable uh, statement in itself, but that's the exception. He's the team captain, and let's see the attitude. Talking about, talking about attitude, we're going to just get to this one here first. Uh-oh, NC001 has no idea, apparently, where he's being shot from. Not even sure if he had a gun, but Merrill able to pick up a UMP and just get the victory in that fight. Really, uh, uh, once again, a bad start uh, for NC01 and his stuff team for WMV, team from China, trying to just work around their edges. Not really being greedy, uh, just trying to go for the main city, but really trash looting around. Had a less popular area, but Kong Red that was in the mix there. Hmm. Another player having a hard time here with April. Yeah, April 1927 uh, trying to exit the hill and actually get some loot down. Looks like uh, doesn't take high flux. Not in the bad spot here. I think that's Hena Henerales. Henerales? Minas Henerales, yeah. uh, just right there. Uh, we like to see them right there. We still have one member from the Lunatic Flux with Tabak uh, right at La Benita, just a little bit south of where they are, the other members are. Look at this player here, Leclo. Really came out of nowhere. Just made that super play. Basically the play of his career right there. Mm -hmm. Probably will not see that replicated for many times to come. Genji Gold, they always go to Impala. I'm not sure how many uh, games that stat is based off of, but Based on the first two days, I would assume, at least. It's still quite high. I'm talking about, you know, it's their second day at PWM, but they played at PS as they t played at APL, and uh, knowing their statistics in the past, they're really stubborn uh, in their starting location. Sometimes that turned out to be a good thing, talking about knowing your, the whereabouts of your city, that you have found the ownership, too. Just knows how to maneuver uh, just around that map. At the same time, you just become too stubborn, overly stubborn. Wow. Just can we work around that? Sandbox Recon facing the same situation. Seems like a lot of teams out here are stubborn, if you want to call it that. I, I guess once you find a place that you really like to drop, and you know that generally not a lot of other teams like to drop them, or you feel confident that you, you can win the fight, you just know the building so well, and 
eventually you can get to a point where you have the ideal looting path actually put down. It's like, okay, you drop there, top side of Picado, I'll drop on the west. This other guy will drop on the east, the other guy in the south, and we'll just take specific paths that they can actually write down on a on a map, on a piece of paper, and then just get through Picado as fast as possible, and then uh, go from there, move on uh, if they need to. And you gotta understand, Valdez, that you know players spend hundreds and hundreds of hours just looting. Yeah. Is you know the fight really comes at you know key moments in the game, but most of the time, uh, of the game time, uh, does come from really just knowing the efficiency of how you can pass around your city. Make sure you get that, like you said, the most efficient uh, farming route as possible. And you know, Maxwell VIP, not really different there for El Posa, but this becomes that increasingly amount of a reason to really be stubborn about your starting location. It, whether it's Miramar or Erangel, you put so many hours into learning about that city in and out, and it just means that the, the starting location for these teams becomes increasingly uh, in important. Uh, even though they, there might be uh, some teams that sometimes like to invade uh, your current homeland. Taking a look at Entis Force, they're right towards the middle of the circle, bound to run into some other members eventually. Speaking of which, it looks like a car chase is nearly on as Stone is at least going to ghost Yak behind him and say, okay, Entis Force is heading up the hill. At least we know where that team is going. Gonna keep that in mind. As uh, MK just trying to find their own position as well. Team Clocks. Uh, look at the damage chart right there. Uh, Leclo. He probably did all of that 227 probably <laughs> from that one fight. I mean, he knocked away four members. This must be average, right? It is. I would assume. Yeah, it yeah. is. And, but that, that average really came up really high. That oh, got yeah. really boosted yeah. uh, after he got literally. Talk about 100 damage needed to finish off one player. He probably had 400 plus damage just from that one fight that he had to, to go 1v4. If you miss yeah. that last fight, you miss that last round in general, I think it's really worth uh, going back today. You might see the play of the season right there from Leclo. Very nicely done. Yeah. We don't see much of Asterix here, but you'll notice that Michael specifically, I remember shouting out his name a bunch of times when Asterix was first playing. And uh, even though they haven't had that much success overall, certainly they've got a star player as managing over a kill per round and also 300 damage is quite high. I mean, Asterix is a team filled with individually talented players and you know, they have all had their moments, uh, not just Michael, but VZ, Oa, Lokers, they all had their share mm -hmm. of really good plays that came from their individual plays, but teamwork is very much needed in PUBG and uh, seeing them lack uh, that part of the department just means that they have to work on their communication, just trying to cooperate in with the team and WGS, huh. first knock here. Yak is like, oh, you want to take some shots? How about a grenade to the face instead? As Sano now in a, a lot of trouble, as it looks like DG98 going to say, uh, sorry, buddy, can't really help you here. Speaking of which, uh, Kukadas also in a bit of trouble, thinking about half his health and damage, just trying to drive away at this point. Sano does go down after Juan and the boys try to just finish up uh, what was started with, and with that knock coming in from Yak's grenade. Really nicely played there, and one to get flunked. Trying to be on that phase here where you are safe and really good position about the, the high hill they have on the top of that hill, and just trying to look towards uh, Entis Force. In the meantime, where they heard most of the gunshots coming through. Yeah, I mean, they've got a couple of fantastic scopes as well. Red Tree rocking the eight times on his scar, something you can only do on one of the older patches, but Able to put that to good use up on top of that really high position. Taking a look at C9, uh, they were towards the middle of the map, but now on the outskirts of it, the southwest part of this new white circle. And this is interesting. I think uh, what they realize, uh, C9, that you just investing towards the middle of the circle every single time, especially without information, uh, has really faulted them. I'm talking about the punishment they took of losing members early in the game. Well, something they, something they wanted to, did not want to uh, recognize once again. And C9 just playing around the edge this time around, knowing that that information ahead uh, should probably help them out uh, later in this game. DZ had this own little compound to himself, actually spotted Gen G uh, driving by. He was able to hand off that information to some of his teammates. Asterix currently very spread out one by one. They are. We'll see if they can group up together and get any kills. 
We have a lot of teams right now at the center of the circle, so teams on the edges will be able to roam out around just a bit more freely. Is he gonna take that shot? Okay. Um, Hancock's got a lot more confidence than I do. If I saw that one, I'd be like, nope, not gonna shoot. Nice uh, damage here on Miramar. Juanita up towards the top. And I guess this is only stats that don't include uh, the first game of today, as it says, previous rank. Yeah, it's gonna be the Miramar matches of their first week around. So Loki has done well for Genji Gold, and I think Genji Gold overall has a good understanding of Miramar. They know how to maneuver around it, avoiding unnecessary fights, and found themselves in a good position last game, but had to go down in a unfortunate situation. A survival time as well here. Notice that Max is still mad, even though they haven't had so many uh, winning records here, they still survive for a very long time. Just means they know how to uh, survive as many members as they can through the late game. And you see three of the members in that top four position there. Taking a look at some kills here on average, WGS. Definitely another one of these more aggressive teams. Just uh, part of Group C. Lunatic High Flux, I'm surprised that they're so high. I guess the first time they played, uh, they must have picked up a lot of kills. Circle down towards the bottom right here. You already have a lot of teams in there. There shouldn't be too many teams moving in. Also very good for C9, who have changed up their strategy, as you mentioned before. Just hanging around the bottom side, and there's no other team really near them. And because all the teams are really located on the center of the previous circle, they not going to have too much of a trouble moving forward, but AWM on the crate there with the Magnums, fittingly, just allowing it to anyone can get, get to that position. Going to be having a good time. Trying to snipe out some key members here. Um, the red dot has been spotted, and Disforce trying to take a fight against them, and charge the compound. Indigo versus Style currently going down. Gonna Sorry. charge up the hill. It is gonna go actually to Style, but he's very low on hell. Juan, he has to come out on the flank to just finish him up, but still a lot of kills coming through. Yeah, Juan did go down actually. Clocky the only casualty so far for Kong to Red Dot. Style able to heal up. Yak up on top of the hill here. Trying to take some shots, not successful just yet. Kill and Yak just trying to snipe from the back. But I really couldn't do much when uh, the two members, especially Juan K, he's still down on the ground. Uh, a hard time trying to just get back up here. And Yak and Hill are just trying to make sure the rest doesn't come through so that it becomes relatively even when they pick up that second uh, phase of that fight. Yeah, Kill and Yak, they might just have to leave Juan behind because his cover rolled away from him. The car actually didn't have the emergency, emergency brake on, so now Juan is just out there by himself. Freak of freaks. They're still angry from round number one, trying to take <laughs> some shots now at Lunatic High Flux. Now sometimes anger doesn't help your cause, and it definitely is not gonna help you in PUBG when you're trying to get some the crucial kills that really is needed to get you the wins, but Oh, Still that's looking at Entus Forest, having a hard time here. That's going to be the end of three members of Entus Forest. It's only one left over. Yak. Yep. Yak, the only one. And it looks like he's going to play the game of let me hide in the crevasse here. Little ditch in the hill. And try not to fight anyone because we don't want to go out in 20th place. Something we definitely know is that Yak is not going to be looking towards that direction once again. Uh, talking about Kong the Red, that's still in full force. Can get towards the last member and towards if need be, but Yak is definitely not going to allow them uh, that visionary. Trying to move on here at DG90 with WGS after losing a member. Trying to look at this here. Mad Cow running over Hanita. Got a little bit angry at his teammates. Going to have to uh, res him up here. We mentioned how this is a very unfortunate mistake to make in PUBG. That downtime going to become less and less the more you get knocked. And of course, you have to spend first aids, boosters, all that good stuff. That time around, he did use a med kit to get himself back to 100%. It's going to be important for this next circle, uh, the, the one that's closing at the moment. Yeah. You see the next one open up. The teams are pretty separated away from each other at the moment. Not really any uh, big investment into the center quite yet. Just means that the next circle will be important to know, you know how the teams will move around for that next rotation. 
OPGG Rangers, they're the team, kind of like Lunatic High Flux from the last match where they've just been staying on the outskirts. I don't want to fight anyone. Four cars moving as a squad. And I thought maybe they would run into Max Till VIP, but that is not the case as they're just going to take the high road, quite literally, down towards the bottom of the circle. They're taking the biggest rotation ever, just trying to get to the next circle. And Mangne just confirming that no one's going to be around the area. And correct on that one, and uh, next circle here. Ooh, kind of forgiving. You got a lot of teams in the circle right now. Unfortunate for WGS up towards the top side, as well as Donawa, Kong to Red Dot, Yak, if he thought he had a chance of staying alive in this one. He doesn't have much now. We'll see what kind of rotation he takes. About these teams uh, currently in the circle, including Maximad in that junkyard. They have to be able to defend out uh, against all the incoming teams from the north, especially. Looks like uh, Ju Gang may have been shot, may have been run over. Based on the smoke coming down, he probably got shot here by uh, one of the Night Wolves members. Let's put the ladder on this one, though. Probably got ran over, I would say, Bapo. There's not really anyone down there uh, towards the south side, as far as I can tell. Cloud9 actually going to take a fight here against Detonator. Nox Dochi. The exception with not that many bullets, but has that powerful AK. Detonator came in from the southeast uh, side of that circle, trying to make the next entrance. But C9 was on the gatekeeping duties there. With the full squad, becomes increasingly easy. Make sure you get the key knocks uh, from Detonator to make them struggle a bit here. Ooh, there we go. Just trying to lay down some smokes and survive. With the suppressor, not really going to help him out here as they know exactly where he is. He's got this little building, Greca. Trying to come in and charge him. Doesn't necessarily have to do that just yet. He will back off. The Inception trying to take a fight, and he's okay. so low. Doesn't get knocked, though. It'll Somehow. It looks going to be all alone here. He has to join in with the other two members. He's been quite distant away from them. Just means that Cloud9, if they do get that information, can rush towards a bit towards Ilgo, uh, but the other two members are still providing the cover uh, from the ground that they're in. Yeah, Ilgo actually did a fantastic job of laying down smoke, getting cover, healing up, and then running to a much better position. Actually, Cloud9 fragging the wrong spot. Dingception coming in here with his Uzi <laughs> doesn't. Uh, they didn't even know that he was gone. So Ilgo, uh, nice move by him. The exception, full auto uh, with that micro Z on the window. <laughs> Much damage done there. Did look like some, some dead body was on the ground, so. We got this fight, the rest of Detonator does join up, and yep. it will be a three on three for now. Well, nine does have all four members. Yeah. With that one last member catch, it's gonna be just away, but should still be able to provide that fight. If need be, Catch yeah. is going to be there for the cover. He's got the wide angle, if you will. He's out towards more the, the center part, but still has eyes. Let's see the new circle. Oh, Ooh, top left. That's wow. uh, unexpected. Only a Freak of Freaks Fatal and MK in a good spot here. That's a muchas gracias right there for Africa Freaks Fatal. <laughs> you, you know You're what I mean? You're keeping it themed to the map, Joel. I like it. I mean, that onto Miramar, you have to be thematic. Yeah. Big Freaks Fatal, great position there. Literally one of the only few compounds left remaining here. And even Sandbox, you see them on the other side. They're going to be right outside the circle. And they have to make a move out. And Freaker Freaks Fatal, they know exactly uh, that someone's going to be holding their compounds there. So just going to be looking for that door opening up. They're going to be ready to fire some shots there. Look at Lunatic High Flux. They're the first team to make the move. With only two members left, they decide, we'll just prone in this little shack. Doesn't even have a proper door, but it's enough. <laughs> They're just going to stick around there. The rest of the team's trying to rotate on in. This should get hairy very fast. 20 teams still left remaining. You saw that heavy rotation slightly from that minimap just below. And you can see a lot of teams just clustering up on each other and going to find themselves and have to go through each other to make sure they get to the next location. That just means uh, kills will eventually be coming through. Cloud9 taking it slow. You'll notice that teams know that Lunatic High Flux is in the house. And in fact, one member did get knocked. At Donawa, they've got their own little shack. 
Nightwolf trying to shoot him down, as well as Homegirl Dong just trying to oh, drive in. Oh, shot on the other side. Sado looks like he will get knocked in the end by Donawa. Munoi himself oh, does no. get knocked through the smoke. We said it was going to get hairy. We were not lying, as it is so hard for every team to get into this very small circle. Sandbox just has to look towards Africa Freaks Fatal. We're just mentioning all the thank yous around the world after that next circle of them, but still a lot of kills that will not be ending very, very soon. Asterisk <laughs> and Actos Indigo running straight into each other. Oh. Two members getting knocked. Look at that mini map right there. So much action on that right side of that circle. That's going to be hugely important into who comes out of in the top here. Asterisk doing a fantastic job here against Actos Indigo. Taking out two members already. One oh. into the last one left of remaining. And he will go down in 19th place. There you go in Asterisk. Feeling good about their win there, but the fight is not over quite yet. Kongdu Red though on the flanks, and MK in there as well. So really important for Genji Gold, who's going to be on the kill feed having a hard time. Leklo actually gets the kill onto Eska, or the knock rather, as uh, Leklo trying to be a hero, or rather the villain of all of the fangirls here in the studio. So looking towards the figure fix Fatal, most important position holder uh, in the circle. Has to make sure that no one keeps up. Keeps up eye and trying to just get to the next location for free. Because it's Fatal trying to just do their best on that defensive efforts here. Oh, look at the circle uh -huh. again. There's so many teams. Still 18 teams remaining, but there's only three in the circle. C9, Maxoman, and a freaking freaks Fatal from that previous circle still in this next one. Let's see what they can do. Loki trying to do some grenades here. Yeah. They're just gatekeeping each other from the blue part of the circle. Coming in behind Leklo, not going to be the hero this time around. This thing's probably going to go down as well through the smoke. Not going to be a problem, but everything's going to go down as well. That's going to be the end. Team Flux. Yeah. Nice try, but it uh, looks like Gen uh, Genji Gold is here to fight this time around. Just made themselves inside the circle. Genji Gold, now they have cleared up Team Clux. Uh, this next entrance will be a lot, lot easier. Uh, trying to make it to the next one. Donawa taking the slow. I like that. You want to take out some members of the other squads per first when you have so many members still left remaining. Oh, oh he shot him through the smoke. Jin here on a roll already has one kill. And make that a knock. Smoke is now gone. Can Yurika survive for a bit longer here? And he actually knocked Suck as well. Yep. As he was trying to jump through the, the window, as you see the predicament that C9 is in. All in this little hut there. Eureka just outside of it. Just be aware of the Maxo Man. He's going to be just shooting around all different angles, trying to defend this very good compound that they're in. And yeah, they got pretty lucky with the, with the circle in terms of they've been in it for quite a while. They've got a very nice compound to boot. Donawa outside the circle. The circle closing in. They have to conclude this fight very, very soon before they have to make a move on. Jong and the rest of Night Wolf being surrounded currently. Donawa, they want to get rid of them before they make a move. That grenade should be good. Doesn't kill anyone just yet. Sarajong is going to die to the blue. MK for the four member squad still in here, but they have to fight against this. Well, teams here. There is going to go down Sandbox. Not too much action for these guys just yet, but now they're running straight into Max Still VIP. Rather, it is the other way around as Max Still VIP trying to get in the circle. Sandbox not able to gatekeep just yet. Circle is closing, so both teams are being outside the circle it has to make this fine relatively short, whether it is a win or lose. Trying to get to the next position here. Ooh, the exception is going to be knocked as Cloud9, they. Left the compound, it seems. Dingception wanted some kills. And uh, all of Genji Gold still available as Clater will get rezzed up here. There's just so much action on the map happening right now. Cloud9 really want to take this fight. Look at Suck coming behind. Ah. He's going to get one, but does get taken down. And so will he go down. Cat's the only <laughs> member left remaining as of now. I love how Eska fans, when they get the kill on the Suck, they cheer so loud. The Suck fans are just crying at the same time. There's a yeah. lot of happiness and sadness all in this stadium here today. 
That's really fantastic for Gen G Gold. Still four members left remaining up on the top right side. It's, it's going to be Gen G Gold versus Max Still Mad versus Afrika Freaks Fatal. These three teams yeah. have four members left remaining and fantastic spots on the map. Really, any team can take this right now. Everyone has to make a move into the next circle, so no one's going to be feeling too safe uh, about the position they were remained in. Is that Gen G Gold, along with Max Still Mad and Afrika Freaks Fatal, you were mentioning earlier. Uh, these three teams are going to be in the focus radius. And when we're talking about who's going to be taking the chicken dinner for round two, we're going to be one of these three teams here. Keep, keeping eyes on many members. Bum does go down to knock out Sandbox in uh, seventh place. And there goes Style to knock out Kong to Red Dot in seventh, I should say. And Big Fix Fatal now just rushing in here. Max Till Matt trying to rush in as well. Trying to find one position at a time. See the circle is going to be closing in very, very soon here. Freak of Freaks Fatal slowly making their way in. Lots of damaged cars by that one little building. You can try to use that as cover as it's towards the middle. So Mad trying to make their entrance as well, while the other two provide the fire. Uh, Genji Gold has to do the same, but just got Eska up from that res. You want to can make up their position they have right now. I like Genji Gold's position the best. They're up on the hill. They have four different vehicles. Let's see if they can make it work. Simpson gonna knock down Sonic here. Yeah, but five between Max Man and Genji Gold. I don't think it's quite done yet. Later picks up one kill onto Sonic. Unjin oh. also gets knocked here. Loki is on a roll tonight. Three kills onto him. Also, Balp does get killed. So Max Man with two members only left remaining. 4v2 for Genji Gold and Max Tomad. Looking on the favor of Genji Gold's side, but like I said, this high hill that they have is going to be tremendous. The way they can push down uh, towards Maximel, who has limited vision in this FPG mode. Look at what a Freak of Race Fatal has done. Two on two in the bottom right, and then two versus one on the left side, trying to deal with $4 OK, who's somehow still left alive. Oh, line. Loki! Trying to get the res. Loki will get the kill. Oh. He gets knocked himself okay. as Uri trying to be the hero. But he's so low, gets the headshot onto Esco, who finally does knock him down and eliminates Max Nomad. 40 seconds left for Genji Gold to move their way in. It's going to be mostly about Freaky Freaks Fatal and also Genji Gold, the last two teams with all four members remaining. OPG Rangers with $4 OK, just going to be trying to med up as much as he can, trying to survive as that third team left remaining here. And his spot is really good. Don't count him out. If this gets really hairy between the two squads and they're not sure if he's alive or not, you can get into a pretty crazy spot. So let's see if $4 OK could upset or if one of these two teams is going to take the victory. This means that $4 OK has to make the movement now with five seconds left on the clock to make the blue circle just move in here. Genji Gold already made themselves way in. Africa Freaks on the other side. It's going to be quite distant between the two teams. In order to pick up a good enough fire, it's going to be mostly about the mid range and to the long range. Well, that okay goes down. Yeah, he had to move. Not much doing for him. So now we got four on four, squad v squad. Let's do it. Freaking fix fatal. Just have to be careful. Be aware of the surroundings. Know exactly where all the members of Genji Gold are going to be. And that's where they have to strategize around in order to pick up their next position. Those are good grenades. Going to force Afrika Fatal to group up together on the right side. They're beginning to get some shots. Simpson also able to come in here and loot the crate, it looks like. Genji Gold a lot more separated than Afrika Freaks Fatal is, who's a bit clustered up together. So that can be either a good thing, providing maximum firepower towards one direction, but if they're separated, Genji Gold might have the advantage here. Jasna, the first to take some shots, trading it with Loki here. And the grenades always super close, but none have landed just yet. Oh, the circle! It's so good for oh. Simpson. They have the cover over by the crate, too, and the high ground over oh, Afrika Freaks Fatal. Loki goes down, though. The card on the eighth shot by Shadow. We talked about this long distance to mid. This is being the key factor. Look at the They're just rushing here. They're charging it to Simpson. 4v3. Can they take him out? Simpson here. Gonna get oh. a shot out to Jesna, though. Can he take out another? Yeah. No, he gets super low. It's and cannot take out Roa. Time for the other members of Genji Gold now to provide the cover here. Jessna is not going to feel safe rushing back into this. And the rest of the Genji Gold fight back here. Simpson actually going to run back to his teammates. Says, okay, I took out some of the armor of one of the members. There are smokes going down. Oh, 
This is so brave by Simpson right now. He doesn't know that the Shadow's gonna be in that distance right there. Has to be careful here. Oh, I think he spotted him, but the, the quick prone there from Simpson. Oh. Jaden goes down. Simpson! Shadow. Oh, trying to come from behind, but he can't oh. get the kill. Finally, he gets the knock there. Jaden gonna go down. Eska also knocking oh, another one. One more left. Shadow's gonna be the last member left. Can Eska and the team do it here? He's only got the car 98 with bullets left over and no health left available. Eska gonna come from behind. This should do oh. it, but no! He Loki. gets knocked by the car 98. Shadow! Oh my goodness, Loki and Shadow here low on health. He's gonna be able to get this one though, but Loki has to rush in quick here. Okay, what's he gonna do? Will he try to go for the res or just try to fight here? It looks like no way for the res, and he wins! Oh! Loki will take the 1v1 versus Shadow, and Shadow just kept this car 98 out, had to do it, couldn't get that final shot down. Everyone at Genji Go was defeated on that occasion, but the king of Miramar, Loki, on the top damage shot, pulls it off once again for his team, Genji Go, and that thumbs up will erupt the crowd into rage, and that is a, such a good win for Genji Go, knowing the whereabouts for their opponent and knowing what to do. Shadow pulled up humongous car 98 yeah. shots onto the head every single time, knocking up two knocks that eventually wasn't there. And really talking about Genji Go coming back from what was behind on their rails here. And really did good with Loki trying to provide the what was available <laughs> to get the win there. Esco, will he give more fan service one last thumbs up as the fans truly like in that one. It was an interesting move by Fatal to, to run into the circle as three and try to catch Simpson off guard, but gotta really applaud the the, the movement by Simpson. The, the balls he had to just run back and say, okay, I gotta run out of this one and try to survive, and that he did. Absolute bravery coming from Simpson, which was also a crucial a key factor in the way that Genji Gold won that game provided that extremely extended vision that was really necessary, providing all the rest of his teammates up with the whereabouts where Freak and Freak's Fatal that had positioned their players. We said earlier, they were clustered up together, so a single fire towards a single target will be a lot stronger for Freak and Freak Fatal. We talk about this, the sparse separation uh, from Genji Gold allowed them to have a, a lot wider variety in terms of the targeting uh, choices there, and that just allowed Genji Gold in the end uh, to come out on top here. Yeah. This entire map on FPP Miramar was quite crazy because there were 20 teams still left available after the third circle came in. And uh, there was tons of fighting right in the mid game before we got to the last point where really only two teams remained on top. You notice that C9, they actually left that little room they were in to challenge up against Donawa and the rest of them, but uh, ended up losing in the end where it all began. Uh, Eska could have been in a bad situation. Trying to just make fourth of what he had to do. And uh, did a good job of every time a member from Genji Gold did go on to a knock, the other members were close by enough to provide the cover and go for the res every time, which allowed them to uh, fight this uh, 4v4 scenario between them and Freaking Freaks Fatal. Oh, how did that he hit sick. that shot? We Absolute didn't actually sick. get that on camera when it happened, yeah. but now we do. I guess one more of those actually Shadow. Yeah. Close range car 98. Look at that! <laughs> That's insane. Gets the shot onto Eska too, but can't win the last firefight up against Loki. Looks like one more body shot with the car 98 wasn't enough to take him down as Loki is the king, who was the only one left standing towards the end. Of course, guys, at the end of round two, we will have our interview. So I'll let Joel do the translating. And we'll see what pro gamer we get to hear from tonight. Halfway point through this game, we're gonna get to an interview. To see what they have to. Wonder what team it's gonna be. Of course, talking about uh, it's gonna be on the top here. Uh, after two rounds, with only two more rounds to go. Miramar is done and over with. Of course, we do have to talk about the super play. Uh, it's gonna be about the uh, talking about Leclo from Team Clux instead. Just really gonna be able to discuss that super play that happened in round one. Anything you'd like to say here? Well, my name is Leclo. I'm coming in from Team Clux. You were the backup position uh, officially, but but you were the most frontline in the way you pulled that super play off. 
And Team Clocks is the only amateur team in the entire PWM tournament here. But anything you like to say, talking about being an amateur team, but doing better than a lot of the professional teams out there. Uh, round one and round two, how'd that feel for you? I usually don't get nervous uh, during the tournaments, but you know, when the circle was very away from us, uh, I, I was very nervous and just with the rest of our team, thinking that it wasn't going to go our way. Uh, I was just trying to just met up as much as I can, but I saw the opportunity coming in, and something came through one step at a time, and I pulled that off, and I think that play looked a lot better than what it actually was. Was there any uh, specific shot calling from that play? I try to not be too aggressive in usually in my place, but, uh, but the shot calling was kind of thorough enough that I knew exactly what I had to do. Of course, in the early game, he did show very good skills in the way that he pulled off that highlight. In the last week, uh, just because that, that itself is just been more disappointing in the way that uh, wasn't that great of a total performance in. Mm. Really was, uh, you talk about a lot of kills that came from you guys last week. You're just kind of showing that off once again that this team is a lot about the aggressiveness. I mean, last week's uh, performances uh, were really horrific in the way they didn't want to be uh, kind of remembering what happened last week. We just kind of take a fresh new look at the way that we uh, finished up this week. So it was really important that we just keep up the good pace here. We're just hoping that you guys uh, continue on this uh, good run that you're having right now in this first two rounds. Do you have that Leclo? The reason you're sitting here right now in this interview is because of that super play in round one. And a lot of the other three members were really just knocked away very earlier uh, in this game. It just felt like you were just going to be just camping uh, around that bush at the end. But something that really was the least suspected play uh, coming out from you. I didn't think I would be able to get in there, but... But he was, nobody was really looking behind him, so you know, we had only one frag grenade uh, remaining there, so we thought that maybe we could get two of the players there and try to go in and everything worked out well. And that team you're talking about was against WGS Arena, who did come out first place up last week and team that everyone wanted to defeat here. You really defeated that four members uh, with all by yourself there. How'd that feel like? <laughs> Definitely felt great because those plays don't come around very often. This means like, since you do have that good round, but uh, round two wasn't the best of you uh, games for you guys, but you have two more rounds on Erringa, which you did perform a lot better last week as well. So you know, hopefully you guys do a lot better. We do you have uh, any game, anything you want to say for the rest of the games here today? We're going to try to just go for the ranks here, uh, for the, as we did in the first round, and try to do for that third and fourth round as well. And that was Leclo coming from Team Clux, about his speaking. We usually do have the top of the standings uh, for this halfway interview, but we did have the super play, which was worth watching once again from Team Clux. Look over there. Yeah, I mean, as the backup player on the team, it doesn't mean he's a sub or anything. It just means he backs up the rest of his teammates. And, well, he was the last one left available. He was their only hope. Got them a great spot, at least for the first map. So that is going to do it for the interview, guys. We'll see you in a few for round three.